The biggest improvements the Inspire 3 made over the Inspire 2 are the FPV camera and feed, the insane low light performance, the incredible signal link, and the flight handling. Well, pretty much everything. That being said, there are a couple of things that I'd still like to see DJI fix in the Inspire 3. But let's jump into the image quality. Now with the Inspire 2, you got either the X5 or the X7 camera, which were a micro four third sensor up to 5.2K or a 6K sensor, which was a Super 35 sensor respectively. Or with the Inspire 3, now you get the X9 camera, which is a full frame 8K sensor that has incredibly good low light performance. In regular good lighting between these two drones, the Inspire 2 still has a really great image quality, really nice photos at 24 megapixels, it just, it still has that really good look. A big difference is though, that you're either cropped in on the lens two or 1.5 times, depending on which sensor you're running. And that makes a difference because it takes a 35 millimeter lens and turns it into a 50 millimeter lens or a 70 millimeter lens, depending on if you're running this super 35 sensor or the micro four third sensor. With the Inspire 2, having that full frame AK footage really does look nice. It gives you lots of ability to reframe in post and it gives you a full frame look, which means that your 50 millimeter or your 35 millimeter lens are actually 50 millimeter and 35 millimeter, which is one of the things that I want DJI to come out with is a 85 to 90 millimeter, 100 millimeter, 135 millimeter, something that's a longer focal length that will give us closer to the look of the 50 millimeter when it used to be on the Inspire 2 because it will give us just a little bit more uh, motion and parallax in shots when you're filming certain subjects, which is great. Aside from the upgrade to 8K footage in the Inspire 3, you also get a dual base ISO sensor, which the Inspire 2 did not have. The Inspire 2 would really start to struggle at about 1600 ISO in low light, where because the Inspire 3 has a dual base of 800 and 4000 ISO, you can get incredibly good low light performance. You're seeing examples here that were shot. I mean, some of these were shot with nothing but moonlight, which I have a whole video about. And when it's live, it'll be linked right up here in the corner. But because you get that second high base ISO with really good noise performance, it gives you the ability to shoot in some really low light and get some great great footage. But another big area where these two differ is in the photos. With the Inspire 2, if you had the X7 camera, you got up to 24 megapixel photos or 24.6 megapixel photos. They were great, they were fine, they look good. But with the Inspire 3 now, because it's an 8K full frame sensor, you get up to 44 and a half megapixel photos and they are fantastic because they have basically a whole stop more dynamic range than the Inspire 2 photos was rated to about 14 stops, the Inspire 3. 15 stops and you get that whole extra stop of light is noticeable when you're shooting in high dynamic range situations. That being said, one of the areas that I would like to see the Inspire 3 improve with firmware is give us auto exposure bracketing because that's not something here. And they did just give us time shots in a recent firmware update, but one massive improvement in photos that the Inspire 3 made over the Inspire 2 is you no longer need the little micro SD card here on the side in order to get photos because even if you had the SSD in the back here, you did not get photos on the SSD. They had to be put on the micro SD card, which never made any sense to me, but that's the way it was. Whereas with the Inspire 3 now, you get this SSD and everything goes on here, which makes it really nice. And while we're there, we're gonna talk about these two different SSDs. The Inspire 2 had a proprietary reader, which was a real pain because it was constantly disconnecting, constantly having issues. And these were expensive, where with the Inspire 3, them going to a USB-C drive uh, basically makes it super easy and just much easier to be able to hand these off to a DIT station and that they can offload the footage or even to work with these files because all you need is a USB-C cable. And somewhat on the image quality, the fact that the Inspire 3 can tilt the gimbal up, up to 80 degrees without getting props in shot, even with an 18 millimeter lens on, gives you the option to get some really interesting and really creative shots. Whereas the Inspire 2 was extremely limited on how much you could up tilt the gimbal and get upward looking shots. That may not be useful to most people or in many situations, but when you do want a shot like that, it's really cool that you can fly the Inspire 3 basically three inches off the ground and get this really nice upward looking shot without having to do anything extra. Somewhat on the user interface side, but also on the image quality, when the Inspire 2 switched between photo and video modes, it would switch all of the settings between them as well. And sometimes, many times, I would have the 
Photo mode, when we go back to video mode, it would stay locked in normal color profile instead of going back to D-Log or whatever we were shooting in. So that was really a pain because you constantly kind of had to be checking all of your settings because occasionally they would just not come back the right way. And the shutter speeds, aperture, all of that would transfer from video to photo mode and not keep them up separate with the Inspire 3. They stay separated and they operate whatever the last settings were you used in that particular setting on photo or video, it would stay in that setting. Much quicker to swap between video and photo modes on the Inspire 3. And then we jump into the user experience. And from a pilot perspective, there's a massive difference between these two drones. And that's not just because of the FPV camera, which is a huge difference. The FPV camera on the Inspire 2 basically gave you a general idea of what you were doing and what you were hopefully not going to hit. But the Inspire 3 gives you a new 4K, crazy good low light performance FPV camera, which has a very wide angle field of view, which can throw you off a little bit if you're not used to operating it. So it takes a bit to adjust to getting used to this thing. But because the image feed is so clear and also so strong, it gives you a lot more confidence to fly the Inspire 3 uh, in tighter situations. And not just because of the massive improvements that the FPV camera has made, but also because of the flight handling and characteristics. Take a look at this video with the Inspire 2 and the Inspire 3 hovering next to each other. No control inputs. The Inspire 3 is basically feels like it's on rails. And the visual positioning system on the Inspire 3 is so much better than the Inspire 2. There were a lot of times where I did not trust the Inspire 2 next to or close to objects because it would drift and because it would act uh, unpredictably in some cases. Whereas with the Inspire 3, even without GPS signal, you can see here, I have total confidence to be able to fly it close to objects because the visual positioning is so good and because it just locks into its flight path so much better than the Inspire 2 did. So the, the flight handling, the position hold, all of that, even without the RTK module, is so much better in the Inspire 3 than the Inspire 2. It gives you a lot more confidence to fly this over the Inspire 2, especially in challenging environments. And in challenging environments, it can be handy to have obstacle avoidance on. The Inspire 2 really was not very good with obstacle avoidance. I never used it because it just never worked very well, in my opinion. And it only really had forward, upward, and downward obstacle facing sensors. Whereas with the Inspire 3, it comes with this 360 obstacle avoidance where you have a camera on the end of each arm, two on the top and on the bottom, and that gives you a much better, much more accurate obstacle avoidance system that gives me confidence to fly closer to objects. And because you can also set how close or how far away you want the obstacle avoidance to trigger, it just gives you the ability to really lock in how you want the Inspire 3 to react in different situations. And on the flight handling, there's something that I noticed that's a huge difference between these two drones. While they both have about the same top speed and descent speed and ascent speed and all that, the biggest difference is that the Inspire 2 would always limit the output power, limit your speed based on the battery voltage, which means that about 40 to 50 to 40% battery, your top speed would be limited to 36, 37 miles an hour because the batteries just could not supply the amount of power needed to the motors to maintain that top speed of 58 miles an hour. With the Inspire 3, on the other hand, you can push this in sport mode at top speed, basically all the way down to about 20% battery life. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think it'd probably shorten the life of your batteries because of the amount of strain that's placed on them. But the fact that you can do it means that the power system, the drive system in the Inspire 3 is so much better than the Inspire 2 in giving you all of that top speed basically no matter what battery life is left. And some of the other user improvements are things like the quick swap propellers, being able to just take them off. Uh, the Inspire 2, I found myself constantly checking to make sure they were on. And when they're on, because they're rigid propellers, the Inspire 2 takes up a fair amount of space. Whereas with these new Mavic style foldable propellers that are really easy to click on and off, you can't install them the wrong way. And they fold up means I can leave this drone set up in the back of my car, without really worrying about it, even when I'm driving around, so long as I'm not driving over anything insane. Uh, but from position to position, I can just have it set up and ready to go rather than having to break it down somewhat. Another huge improvement the Inspire 3 made over the Inspire 2 is the way the lens connects here. The lens connect on the Inspire 2, I always had to give it a little jiggle to make sure the pins seated properly and the Inspire 2 could communicate with the lens. Otherwise you'd have to restart and kind of redo it. 
Whereas with the Inspire 3, you now get these the same lock-in that clicks right, and then also this locking collar that really tightens the lens down, keeps you from having any vibration, and I've never had a lens communication issue. Now, if you don't lock that lock ring completely, you will get an error message and you will have to restart, but if you get used to locking the lens, it operates so much better than the Inspire 2 did. Another improvement on the Inspire 3 over the Inspire 2 are these landing feet. I've had to replace these and friends of mine have had to replace these so many times on the Inspire 2 because eventually they just wear out and crack. And because your antennas are housed in these, it also means you don't get very good signal length. But with the Inspire 3 having these much heavier duty, much thicker, much better feet and better LEDs in them, all of my flights so far I do without landing assistance on or without the downward uh, protection on. And I come in and land gently, but I feel like even if you did land a little bit hard, these are going to withhold stand up a lot better than the Inspire 2 did. And I'm speaking from experience, the Inspire 2, they did not hold up well if you ever landed a tiny bit hard. Another huge improvement on the Inspire 3 over the Inspire 2 is how you can quick swap batteries. Basically, you have two levers in the back here. You pop one, pull the battery out, swap it, pop the other, pull the battery out, swap it. It's done with the Inspire 2. It was a lot more difficult process because of this kind of pin system over here in the back. But not only that, one of my favorite things about the Inspire 3 is the fact that you no longer have to pair the batteries together in order for them to work. With the Inspire 2, you had to pair the batteries. With the Inspire 3, it's just, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's still better to keep them so they're on the same amount of cycles and stuff, but you don't have to have them paired for them to work properly. And on the durability side, the Inspire 3 has these better tie rods here in order to raise and lower the arms that are a lot more durable and a lot stronger because they have these ball joints at the bottom, whereas this, the little linkages here at the bottom, I did have them break and I know friends of mine had them break occasionally. And something else that I like about the Inspire 3 over the Inspire 2 is the Inspire 3 is a lot quieter, but it's not just a lot quieter, it also just sounds nicer. It's a more pleasant sound. It's not as harsh or sharp a sound, and I'm sure that's because of these new folding propellers. And on the battery chargers, a huge improvement in the fact that you get this now with the Inspire 3, being able to charge eight batteries, and you can go between three different charging modes where you can charge quickly two, two batteries at a time up to 90% and then communally trickle charge the last 10% or you can just charge them regularly well it would charge all of them to 100% uh, sequentially but it's also the fact you get eight of them here it has a 65 watt power delivery port for charging the remote which we'll talk about in a second as opposed to this little system which you'd have to have two of these and these were constantly breaking off you had no other charging modes other than just letting them charge at whatever speed DJI set them to charge out, which wasn't terribly fast. Huge, huge improvement on the battery charger. Also, you had to have a big power brick to be able to operate this, whereas this, it's just a three pin cable going into the wall. So no more special power bricks for this thing. And then we come to the remotes. Now, if you didn't get the Sendence remote, which is what this is, and say the Crystal Bright Sky, uh, the Crystal Sky Bright monitor or anything like that, you got just a regular standard remote, which was fine, wasn't great. You had to use an iPad or something like that. Whereas this remote, the sentence remote was much better, but the signal link between these was terrible. As you can see here, it's easy to get disconnected even at a very short distance. There's the drone right there. There's the operator and we just lost signal again. But not only that, I also struggled with the Crystal Sky Monitor freezing up quite a bit, especially in hot or very cold weather, it would have issues. Just in general, it wasn't great. Whereas with this new remote, it is so much better and having it all built into one really makes it fantastic. The screen is pretty bright. I would recommend a hood because otherwise you get lots of reflections. Having all of these buttons really well laid out to where you can easily grab them really quick and everything about this remote responds really well. Also, because they've included the WB37 battery inside and an internal battery, you get great battery life. You can hot swap batteries and basically operate all day without having to worry about recharging the remote itself. But when you do recharge the remote, it also recharges not, the, not just the internal battery, but also the WB37 battery that's in the remote. So you can have a full, you know, five to six hours, seven hours of flight time and be able to hot swap, which is great. That being said, one of my favorite things about the Sentence Remote was the ability to use this dial on the side here to change how fast or how slow your gimbal responded. 
um, you have no way to do that on this remote here. And that is really unfortunate, at least not one that I've found. But the other thing that bothers me about this is the way they've laid out the speed control here on the um, this little toggle switch. It makes no sense to me to go from normal mode, sport mode, and then into the tripod mode, the slow mode. Uh, it should go from tripod normal to sport. I wish they would give us a way to reprogram this button so that you could essentially start in tripod mode or slow mode and then go into normal mode and then into sport mode if you needed to slowly bring your speed up on the drone. That being said, one of the biggest improvements between these is the fact that now each remote links directly to the drone over the remotes linking to each other and then linking to the drone if you're doing dual operation. So that means that your pilot and your camera op don't have to be standing basically right next to each other in order for it to work, which is always a pet peeve of mine with the Inspire 2. Now you can basically be anywhere within a five mile radius of the drone. Both of you can connect and control the drone just fine. And this new little quick switch button here where you can take control of the drone between either person operating this remote makes it really nice. Uh, just, yeah. I really do like this remote. I just wish there was a way to reprogram the speed toggle here, the mode toggle. And I wish there was a way to add in a dial or something to be able to ramp up or ramp down your gimbal speed uh, as you need to, like there was on the sentence remote. Now, I know that's not all the differences between these two drones. There are a lot of differences. And the overall, the Inspire 3 is a massive, massive upgrade from the Inspire 2, especially in the signal link department and in the low light and in the FPV feed. It just is so much better. That being said, if you do most of your filming or photo taking during the day, really the Inspire 2 still offers some great image quality. But I would like to know what you think if you've operated both of these drones and what you think that uh, they still need to fix or add into the Inspire 3. Let me know in the comments below. Until then, you're going to want to watch this video right here. I'll see you over there as always. If you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we can have more of a conversation and I can maybe answer questions I didn't get to in this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.